turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I read two verses. I'm speaking on the theme of the youth convention. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Because the lot of his inheritance. Verse 13. He made him ride on the high places of the hearts. That he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck on out of the rock. And hoy out of the flinting rock. Hallelujah. And speaking on the topic, go to new heights. Go to new heights. Before I go on, I would like to pass uh, a commentary on the passage we have just read. Verse 13. He made him ride on the high place of the heart, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and hoy out of the flinting rock. This is God telling you that I'm going to make impossible things to become possible. Because how do you suck honey out of the rock? And now look at it, you suck honey out of the flinting rock. It is not a play on the walls. Rock is different from the flinting rock. In geology, when we say we have a flinting rock, it is a rock that no water can pass through it. It has no hair in between. It is so hard that nothing can pass through it. A flinting rock is a hard rock that is so hard that nothing, even here, cannot pass through it. When the Bible says flinting rock, it is so hard that even air cannot pass through it. But look at what the Lord is saying. The Lord says, if you make it to suck honey out of the rock, you know what a rock is? A flinting rock is different from a rock. If you have seen geology and your laboratory, as equipment, you will see flinting rock there. It's not an iron rock. The Lord says, out of the rock, you will suck out only. That is practically impossible. And he says, out of the flinting rock, oil shall come out. It's much more impossible. But this is God's promise that is going to do it and going to make impossible things to become possible. I say unto you, the youth, impossible things become possible in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord bringing out oil out of the fainting rock is a miracle. Bringing out honey out of the rock is a miracle. And that's what the Lord is going to do in your life in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you today to leave your present level. Do not think that you are young. Teach us to number our days so that we apply our hearts unto wisdom. If you are going to go higher in life, you now lay the foundation. That was why I was so burdened when the Lord told me that I need to pray for a young girl under the bondage of fornication. Because you are sowing seed, seed, seed that will not help you in your future life. Whatever you are doing today is a seed against tomorrow. So any of you that is going to arise and go to new heights, we have to begin to sow the seed of greatness. Hallelujah. We are in the Bible. A man like David was a shepherd boy. 
David was a shepherd boy. He was on the father's farm, tending the sheep. When the prophet came and began to ask for him in his father's house, the father he won for God that he was on the field. And the prophet said, Are these all your children? Say, but there's one little one. He was not fit for the nation. And the prophet said, Bring him here. As a young boy, David was anointed to be the king of Israel. What about Joseph? He was young. When the Lord gave him the dream, the dream of promotion. Because he was a young boy, he could not control his dreams. He could not control his revelation. He shared it with his colleagues, with his brothers and the family. I don't want to let to his predicaments. I don't want to let to his trouble. Joseph did not mess up his life. I was thinking today, if it were to be today, many young girls had that, many young boys had that kind of opportunity. They will defy themselves. He was young. He fulfilled the dream to be the prime minister of Egypt. And after Joseph left the throne, after Joseph died, you never read that Egypt had another prime minister. The position of prime minister was created for Joseph. For him to be able to fulfill his dream. And after he left the throne, you never read that Egypt had another prime minister. The position of prime minister was not there before. And after he left, it was removed. For you not to fulfill your dream, God will create a way for you in Jesus' name. Yes, that's the Lord. For his dream to be fulfilled. God created that position for him. Hallelujah. You also read about Daniel. He was a young statesman who refused to defy himself with the king that came out from the king. With the food that came out from the king. He said, we are not going to defy ourselves but prove us Prove us. Give us vegetables to eat. We are not ready to eat the, the meat sacrifice unto idols. And so, it became relevant. We are debating and today we are encouraged. The youth of today, lay your foundation for today. If you want to be great in life, you lay it for today. Most of the people you are seeing today that are Making waves in the kingdom. They started when they are young. They were there when they were young. Hallelujah. There's no need to say I'm young. Whatever you want to become tomorrow, plan for you today. Exercise chapter 12. Exercise chapter 12. And verse 1. Hallelujah. Exercise chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator. When do you remember him? Now. Remember now. Not tomorrow. Remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. Remember God when you were young. Let me turn it this way. Plan now for your future in the days of your youth. Hallelujah. Why the evil days come not? Nor the years draw nigh. When I say, I have no prayer in them. That's the predicament of the old age. I have no prayer in them. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember, remember him. Plan for your life now. Whatever you become tomorrow, you start from now. A man got you to the age of 70 and he was born again. 
as the people were singing, jumping, the youth were singing, jumping, and uh, the man sat and began to cry. They asked him, one of the guys asked him, Papa, why are you crying? He said, I have to cry. I'm not 70. How many years do I have left for me to go back to God? If I give my life to Christ when I was young like this once, I would be happy. But now I'm not 70. How many years do I have left? And the man still continue weeping. And the president of the fellowship had to call him and had to appeal to him, see you the rest of years to glorify God. Now that you are young, <laughs> remember now your creator. Go up higher. Leave your present level. And the Lord God Almighty will use you mightily in the name of Jesus. It is nice to be on a new height. It's nice to be on the top. It's not, it's, it's not good to be on the ground. You have to be on the top. Okay, okay. You have to be on the top because the advantages that you get by being on the top. Number one advantage is that when you're on the top, when you're on the new height, you can see afar off. That long sightedness. You can see afar off. The reason why an eagle can see very far, an eagle has a sharp sight that can see very far, an eagle can see several kilometers away. Because the eagle is on the top. Hallelujah. The eagle is on the top. He can see several kilometers away. You have to be like an eagle. You have to be like an eagle. When you are on a new height, you can see afar off. You can see what is happening. In your immediate environment and the far distance. I pray that I will take you afar off in the mighty name of Jesus. You will get up to your new height in the name of Jesus. You will be like an eagle. An eagle does not crawl on the ground. Unless by choice. An eagle does not move with the chicken. It doesn't move with the chicken. An eagle has a class that he has built for himself. An eagle bear does not you know, job play at a low level. It is always on top, new height, higher height. That's why the eagle bear belongs to. And that is where you belong to too. Aspire to be great in life. Aspire to be great in life. And when we are talking about greatness, many of us, we always look at it secularly. If you want to be great in life, first of all, be great in the spirit. If you want to amount to somebody important that people will reckon with, first of all, start from the spirit. A child who does not know life, we begin to think of, let me make it, let me, and he has forgotten God. There is no making me forgetting God. If you want to be great in life, don't joke with your father. When I was a student, something used to amuse me. You know, the volume of books to read was very much. And students won't come for night VG. They will say, I'm busy. They prefer to pay for us for two or three minutes. For God to send in us, they will not come. There were about five of us in those days who used to come for night VGs. Just only five on a regular basis will come. Accidentally, in the rainy season, then we begin to beat us on the ground. At times we will be white, still interceding. 
Pray. I look at all the five of us today. All the five of us. God has made us to be great. There are brothers, when you are doing fasting, they will say, if I don't eat by 12, no, in the afternoon, I will develop stomach ulcer. They are still, in fact, one more day is a backslider. The coppers that came from Idaraba, their president approached me one day. He said, we heard about you. Why a student? And I'm glad that I was posted to this state. I said, I will meet with you. And I said, I have a so so so. He says, a lecturer. I have this, this. I have that. You can't. Then I mentioned one brother. Ah, he bowed down his head. He didn't answer me. I said, please, how is this brother? He says, sir, pitifully, that brother has backslided out of faith. It's not carrying women drinking out beer all over the campus here and there. I said, you don't mean it. He was coming to the fellowship, though not committed. You see, whatever you want to become tomorrow, so the see today. Hallelujah. You want to be great. Don't take God as spare tire. You want God to bless you and to amount somebody important in life. God is not an option. You will hook onto this God to see you through. Praise the Lord. That's my counsel for you today. Don't take God as a spare tire. Be on top spiritually. When you are on top spiritually, God will begin to make everything work out well for you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you are on the new heights, number two, you can know things better. On the new heights, you can see things, you can know things better. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. You see, there are many things we need to run after. We are not running after them. As youth. And that's our problem. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is one thing that you must not shun in your life. Wisdom is one thing that you must just run after and acquire. Two things are very important to your greatness. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is different from understanding. Understanding is knowing the facts. Facts or this, facts or that. Yes. But the way to apply what you have known correctly that one is with wisdom. Wisdom is the correct application of facts. Understanding is the knowledge of facts. Why wisdom is the correct application of the facts that understanding has given you. Don't run away from wisdom understanding. It's very, very important in life. A young boy, young girl that wants to be on a new height, you must not run away from wisdom and understanding. They are going to put you through. Wisdom will bear you out of many predicaments. Wisdom will bear you out of many troubles. Wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4 7. Therefore, get wisdom. And we thought that getting, get understanding. Exhort her. Lift her up. Exhort her. Exhort wisdom. I'm going to share with all this on how to exhort wisdom. Exhort wisdom. Lift her up. Embrace wisdom. Look at verse 8. Exhort her. And she shall promote it. Wisdom is not just about it. God likes it to a woman. Look at it. Verse 
8. Exhort her. The Bible didn't say exhort it. God liken wisdom to a personality. Why should God liken wisdom to, to a woman? A woman does things carefully. When a woman is in the kitchen, she prepares her food delicately. She knows where to add oil. She knows where to add salt. She she's very very meticulous about the food. And it's different from when a man is preparing the food. Am I talking? I can tell different when a man prepares food and when a woman prepares food. When a man prepares food, either the food is too salty or the food is undersalted. But a woman knows the right quantity of salt to add. Very, very meticulous. They are very meticulous. They know when the food is good and when it is not good. That's why the Bible says, exhort her. Treat wisdom like you treat a woman. Embrace wisdom. And she said, promote the wisdom will lead to a promotion. She said, bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, honor will come unto you. I said the youth, honor will come unto you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Honor will come unto It is by wisdom we get honor. Even, let me share with you, in the area of getting the anointing, there is wisdom in getting the anointing. There is a way you uh, satisfy your prayers. You can get 20 prayer points in a day. Daddy pray for me. I take you. Daddy pray for me. I take you. Daddy pray for me. When I need that to pray, I handle the most important point. First of all, priorities in prayer. I will not waste my time on prayer points that are not so important. Wisdom. Wisdom. And even when you get the anointing, there is wisdom in getting the anointing. Wisdom. You don't need to pray for, uh, you know, 12 years for the anointing to come. No. There are seeds of ways of working the anointing. I used to have people pick the simplest one. The anointing will follow you. Wisdom. Exhort her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Honor will come unto you in Jesus' name. When you are on that new height, understanding is better. Amen. The third point is that it is cooler at the new height. The higher you go, the cooler it becomes. It is cooler. Cooler. Everybody say cooler. Cooler. You are on this level now. When you are going up like that, they become cooler. It's in the Bible. It is better to get to new heights because there things are better. There was a prophet. A prophet that was passing on in the city of Shunem at the front of a woman's house that was very rich. The prophet was passing by every day the prophet would pass by the front of that woman. She go to Mankame to go and pray. And this woman was wiser than many other people. And this prophet was passing by the front of her house. She was wiser. I pray God will make you wise in Jesus' name. She was wiser. And the woman took note of 
I perceive my heart that this is an only man of God. Your perception will be very sharp. I perceive that this is an only man of God. She told the husband. She said, Let us build a house for him on the top of the wall, not down. The woman was looking for the best for the prophets. Let me buy a parcel of land on the top of the wall. The wall in those days was not like the wall you used to build. The wall of a city, very wide. I can remember when I was serving the Bauchi state. They took me to the wall of the city of Bauchi. Despite the fact that the walls have broken down, rain, fortune, shine, have come on the wall, the wall was still white. But in those days, it was even wider than what we are building today. And this woman said, I perceive this and only man of God. You must be able to perceive your spirit. Don't just be a youth and say, well, I'm still young. Many of us, we think that we are still young. Teach us a number of days. When you are on the new heights, number two, you can know things better. On the new height, you can see things, you can know things better. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. You see, there are many things we need to run after. We are not running after them. As youth. And that's our problem. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is one thing that you must not shun in your life. Wisdom is one thing that you must just run after and acquire. Two things are very important to your greatness. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is different from understanding. Understanding is knowing the facts. Facts or this, facts or that. Yes. But... The way to apply what you have known correctly, that one is with wisdom. Wisdom is the correct application of facts. Understanding is the knowledge of facts. Why wisdom is the correct application of the facts that understanding has given you. Don't run away from wisdom understanding. It's very, very important in life. A young boy, young girl that wants to be on a new height, you must not run away from wisdom and understanding. They are going to put you through. Wisdom will bear you out of many predicaments. Wisdom will bear you out of many troubles. Wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4 7. Therefore, get wisdom. And we thought that getting, get understanding. Exhort her. Lift her up. Exhort her. Exhort wisdom. I'm going to share with all this on how to exhort wisdom. Exhort wisdom. Lift her up. Embrace wisdom. Look at verse 8. Exhort her. And she shall promote thee. Wisdom is not just about it. God likes it to a woman. Look at it. Verse 8. Exhort her. The Bible says exhort it. God likes wisdom to a personality. Why should God like wisdom to, to a woman? A woman does things carefully. When a woman is in the kitchen, she prepares her food delicately. She knows what to add oil. She knows what to add salt. She she's very very meticulous about the food. And it's different from when a man is preparing food. Am I talking? 
I can tell the difference when a man prepares food and when a woman prepares food. When a man prepares food, either the food is too salty or the food is undersalted. But a woman knows the right quantity of salt to add. Very, very meticulous. They are very meticulous. They know when the food is good and when it is not good. That is why the Bible says, exhort her. Treat wisdom like you treat a woman. Embrace wisdom. And she said, promote the wisdom will lead to a promotion. She said, bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, honor will come unto you. I said the youth, honor will come unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Honor will come unto you. It is by wisdom we get honor. Even, let me share with you, in the area of getting the anointing, there is wisdom in getting the anointing. There is a way you uh, satisfy your prayers. You can get 20 prayer points in a day. Daddy, pray for me. I take you. Daddy, pray for me. I take you. Daddy, pray for me. When I need that to pray, I handle the most important points, first of all. Priorities in prayer. I will not waste my time on prayer points that are not so important. Wisdom. Wisdom. And even in getting the anointing, there is wisdom in getting the anointing. Wisdom. You don't need to pray for, uh, you know, 12 years for the anointing to come. No. There are seeds of ways of working the anointing. I used to have people pick the simplest one. The anointing will follow you. Wisdom. Exhort her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Honor will come unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. When you are on that new height, understanding is better. Amen. The third point is that it is cooler at the new height. The higher you go, the cooler it becomes. It is cooler. Cooler. Everybody say cooler. Cooler. You are on this level now. When you are going up like that, they become cooler. It's in the Bible. It is better to get to new heights because there are things are better. There was a prophet. A prophet that was passing on in the city of Shunem at the front of a woman's house that was very rich. The prophet was passing by every day the prophet would pass by the front of that woman. She go to Mount Kame to go and pray. And this woman was wiser than many other people. And this prophet was passing by the front of her house. She was wiser. I pray God will make you wise in Jesus' name. She was wiser. And the woman took note of, I perceive my heart that this is an holy man of God. Your perception was very sharp. I perceive that this is uh, only man of God. She told the husband. Say, let us build a house for him on the top of the wall, not down. The woman was looking for the best for the prophets. Let me buy a parcel of land on the top of the wall. The wall in those days was not like the wall you used to build. The wall of the city, very wide. 
I can remember when I was serving the Bauchi State. They took me to the war of the city of Bauchi. Despite the fact that the walls have broken down, rain, fortune, shine, have, have, have come on the wall, the wall was still white. But in those days, it was even wider than what you are building today. And this woman said, I perceive this is an only man of God. You must be able to perceive your spirit. Don't just be a youth and say, well, I'm still young. Many of us, we think that we are still young. Teach us a number of days. It was when I got to the year 60, I discovered that time has gone. Pretty got to fool me. I remember you used to carry us on, on crusade. Policemen arrested you. You failed the policeman. You dare them. This and that. He said, the day I followed you to the police station, that day I feared you. I said, I will never follow you again on the crusade. I didn't see I didn't know that was the reason. He left me. Other crusade was not following me. The policeman said, the DBO said, I had the power to arrest you. I was looking at him. I had the power to jail you. I was looking at him. After I finished, I said, sir, can I talk? He says, I said, thank God. I want you to use your power to arrest me. Because when I get to prison, I make sure all the prisoners are converted. Ah. The man said, you are not afraid? I said, I will never be afraid. I'm ready for prison. That day, the brother followed me and said, I will never follow this man again. A man that will not fear policeman, a man that will ready to be imprisoned, I will not, I will not follow him again. We did all those things when we were young. Whatever you want to do for God, plan for it. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. You will never be tired in the name of Jesus. Second King chapter 4. The great woman of Shunem planned for prophet Elisha and he built a house for him. Let me start to read from verse 10, verse 8, sorry. Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 8. And he fell on the day that Elisha passed on to Shunem. Where was a great woman? A great woman was a rich woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as something as he is passed by, he turned in neither to eat bread. This woman saw the prophet walking, and he was invited, she was inviting him to his to her house. And on a regular basis, Elisha would go in and eat bread. Verse 9. As she said unto her husband, wise woman, she said to her husband, Behold, I perceive. Perception is always very strong in a woman. A woman who knows the Lord. Not a woman who is worldly. I perceive that this is an holy man of God. Nobody told that the man was holy, but she received it in her perception. This is an holy man of God which passes to her continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. The a plot of land on the wall was costlier than on the ground. Because on the wall, you can see a fowl, it's cooler, this and that. It used to sell very fast. On the wall of, uh, on the wall of the city in those days, you have race courses that people can judge you horse race, car race, and so on and so forth like that. Very wide a wall. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed and a table. A bed to sleep, a table to read, and a stool to place his food on, on the stool. And a candlestick to give light into the house. And he did not need air conditioner because it was already cool. And shall be when he cometh 
to us that shall turn in Dada. And he fell on one day that he came out there and he turned into the chamber and lay there. Praise the Lord. The wise woman, great woman of Shune, prepared a place for a man of God. She was wise. And because of that, God made her to be greater. Hallelujah. Also, on the new height, higher height, you can see the plan of the enemy easily. Demon's plan is easily seen on the new height. Don't forget, Elijah used to be on Mount Carmel praying. And that was how he knew the secret of the king of Israel. Second King chapter 1. Second King chapter 1. Hallelujah. From verse 9. Then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went to him and behold, he sat on the top of a knee. He sat on the top of a knee. A person sitting on the top of the hill is higher than the other levels. I can see the plan of the enemy easily. And he spoke unto him, Thou man of God, the king has said, Come down. And Elijah said, The month I've been on the top of the hill praying, that I've been on the top of the hill receiving from the Lord, he just uttered a word. And Elijah said, And said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven. I consume thee and thy 50. And that came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. He did not need to struggle. The level at which he was, he will not struggle for the power to come down. I pray that God will take you to this new height so that the power of God begin to move in your life easily in the name of Jesus. He did that for the second fifty and the captain. By the time the third group came, down was wiser. He fell down. Say, oh man of God, have mercy on me. Now king that sent me, oh, don't kill me. And the Lord said, follow him to the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the top part of verse 13. Oh man of God, I pray thee, let my life and life of these 50 the servants be precious in the sight. Hallelujah. And that was how the Lord preserved the life of that person and uh, the rest. You can see the plan of the enemy on the new height when you get there. The Lord will take you that new height in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, when you go for a function, maybe, let's say, wedding ceremony or important function, it is the very important people that sit on the high table. The table is higher than the rest level. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see the high table. They say, let's call Jesus so, so, to come and sit on, on this table. Let's call so, 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 so person to come and sit on the table. And they march down to the table. They sit on the table. The high table is meant for digging trees. Not meant for the plebeians. Hallelujah. So you will sit on the high table of honor in the name of Jesus. Then how do you get to a new height? That's the climax of this message. How do you get to a new height? I'm going to show us only one key and then we stop. Only one key. Out of all the keys of getting to a new height, I will show us just only one. And I want to believe that that one is going to help us out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The first key is to associate with somebody who is already on the top. Associate with somebody who is already on the top. If you want to be on the top, associate with somebody on the top. Many youths are not wise in that regard. Be wise. There are many things you do not struggle for. You get them by association. Associate with a man who is already on the top. Relate with him. 
As you share with him, you know what you're looking for. Get all you want to get for your benefit. As you share with a man who is already on the top. Study his life. Don't just share it with anybody. Many of us, may I tell you, you don't know a good minister by the pulpit. You don't know a minister how he is by the pulpit. No, everybody is holy on the pulpit. No, you don't, you, you, you don't know a man like that. Come to his closet. Relay with him. He say, man of law. He say, man that wants to help you. He say, man that's giving you good advice. He say, is he anointed? Hallelujah. As you share with a man that can help you. You don't know a man by the pulpit. That is several time when you are listening. You are listening to message. You say, ah, that message is fantastic and that. We that are elders, you know ourselves in the kingdom. I say, hmm, fantastic. I won't talk. Hmm, fantastic. We are elders. I said, the people at times, I don't talk. But what people call the anointing today is not the anointing. The anointing is not only to heal the sick. The, an the anointing is not only to lay hands on the, on the people for, for another the power. There's what you call the preservative, preservative power of the anointing. Anointing preserves your life. Move with a man that can, when you stand on the shoulder of another, you see a far off. Move with a man that can stand on his shoulder. I'm talking particularly to you, the you today. Move with a man, stand on the shoulder of the header so that you can see a far off. Hallelujah. Associate with him. Associate with him. Hallelujah. You want to get a new height? Listen to his messages. No matter who read his books. Read his books. Many of us will read books that cannot help us. There are some books when you read, it will put you more into a problem. Read good books. Read my books. I I say boldly, read my books. The books that are written by Reverend Farola, read them. They will change your life. Hallelujah. Second Timothy, turn around to Second Timothy. We are going to the end though. Because when it concerns the world, the enemy doesn't want us to listen to the world. But this is what we liberate us. Second Timothy chapter 4. Verse 13. The cloak that I left at Troas with Capus, when that come here, bring with thee and the books, but especially, especially the parchment. Apostle Paul was a reader. He was writing to Timothy's son. He said, when you are leaving to see me, the cloak was a dress that I left in the city called Troas with a man called Capus. When you are coming, bring that cloak. Bring that, it, it's like a coat. Bring it to me. And my boots that I lay behind. And the parchment. The parchment are where you record the Pentateuch. Five books of Moses. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul was a reader. In Daniel chapter 2. Daniel began to tell all the secret of, of his revelation. Daniel was telling us about the secret of his revelation. Daniel chapter 9. Turn back to Daniel chapter 9. Verse 2. In the first year of the reign of Darius, I, Daniel, understood by books. Understood what? By what? The books we, you read we make or mar you. I then understood by books the number of the years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that will accomplish 70 years in the solutions of Jerusalem. Daniel would not have known that he read that, he read that from the book of prophecy. So be a reader. 
Read books. It will train you. When you read the book of a man of God, you get his spirit. You get his anointing. The books you read, you get the spirit of the author. At times, and also you must pray for the discerning of the spirit. What do I, what do I call it? Discerning of the spirit. An ability to stand before a man. To be able to discern what is his spirit. It's a gift of God. Ask for it. You see, pray for the signing of the spirit. So that they will not cheat you. So that they, look, that gift God that used it to help me a lot. God has used that gift to help me a lot. Do you many of all you don't have that gift? That's a problem. Today you are looking for money. A young brother said, by the time I got a big abada and I mean it, they give me a big good arrow. I said, nothing is not in the color, it's in the calling. Well, you have big abada or not. Read books. Buddha said, read books, biographies. Read books of great teachers. Read books of evangelists and pastors. There are many of them that God is using today. Hallelujah. There are many of them God is using them today. Look after their teachings. Move close to them. If you have the money, if you hear about a man of God, so, 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 please, and God is using, go there. Go to that place, go there. You lay with him. The day I saw Young Cho on the podium, Young Cho, the man with the largest church in the world, the day I saw him, an old man now, speaking, speaking. They took us to the grotto. Hallelujah. I knelt down the grotto. I said, let the power of this man come upon me. I was not looking for money. Money will surely come. Don't put what's supposed to be last at first. Money will surely come. 